the EMS pilot, and I hear all the horror stories when I'm, you know, at the training, and and you know we hear these things as pilots, and I go out and we go land at a hospital, and a storm comes through, and I have a problem with an engine starting, so the patient goes by ground, the crew goes with them, mechanic comes out, takes care of the aircraft problem, and I'm checking the weather. And they're saying like, you know, a thousand feet. And I'm going, ah, a thousand feet, you know, okay, that's good, two or three miles, okay. It's at night. And I'm thinking, it's it sounds like it's gonna be all right. Well, between where I was at and to get home, I can tell you the cloud level, I don't know what it got down to, four or five hundred feet. So I take off with the right intentions, thinking, oh, I'm, you know, gonna be okay. And the farther I got out in the middle of nowhere between where I was and getting back home, there's no weather reporting stations about a 45 mile flight, I'm halfway in between the middle of nowhere, almost no ground reference lighting, and I keep coming down, and I keep coming down, and I don't even remember how low I got, and I don't even want to admit how low I got. But I know that I kept flying, I kept getting lower, and what I should have done is just landed. I should have landed the helicopter, and shut it down, and called and said, hey, I got in some bad weather, and I'm on the ground, and I'll, and I'll sit here until it clears, or you know, in the morning we'll do whatever, but the problem is we don't want to admit that we're wrong. We don't want to go through the embarrassment of landing out in a field somewhere in the middle of nowhere and putting an EMS ship out of service because we made a stupid call and flew in some weather we shouldn't have. The right thing is to do is to land and just shut down and wait for better weather, but we don't want to do that, and that's why guys get themselves into trouble because we're macho. We don't want to say no. You know, we get ourselves halfway involved into a flight, and then it turns ugly, and we're chicken to turn around, or we're chicken to just land. And I know, like in an Omni flight towards the end, they they in the beginning they would say, you know, make a 180 turn and fly back out of it, and then they changed their tune at a certain point and said, you know what, guys, with everything that's going on, all these helicopters are crashing. If you get into nasty stuff, we want you to land. We don't want you to turn around. We want you on the ground. If you start getting into the soup, land, put it on the ground, have the gust to shut it off, call your base and say, I just landed. I'm on the ground. We're safe. Here's where we're at. You know, we're going to wait for the weather to clear or whatever. But, yeah, yeah. you know, we make these decisions for all kinds of stupid reasons when we know better. And it's very easy to be thinking you're making the right decision and go, Ah, the weather's it's good enough. I, I can do this okay. And then you run into stuff that's not forecasted or you're just in between weather reporting stations and the weather's lower than reported. You know, there's all kinds of reasons that people get themselves into trouble. And what I was getting at there, the other part of that is, you know, there's no way really to teach new students. I mean, you could put them in a simulator and go out and put them in a, you know, inadvertent IMC, which, you know, that's good training, but I just feel like I wish there was a way we could take students and show them in the real world how scary it can be and how quick it can happen, but there's no real way for you to take an aircraft out, a VFR aircraft, and put it in almost IMC conditions. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. I've thought about how can we train, you know, what can we do to really train students, so I, I think that's one thing, you know, other than using a simulator, which again it's a simulator, so okay, there's no real fear of crashing because you're in a simulator. You can give somebody an idea of how scary it could be, but it's not the same as being out in the real world and and getting scared half to death that you're going to wreck the aircraft, and you know, here I'm coming back and just going, got it, you know, I, and I made it back okay and everything was fine, but when I was in that soupy stuff and I started sifting through this low layer of clouds going, oh my God, you know, it's just going to get worse before it gets better. <laughs> and I'm thinking, here I am, I'm going to be the statistic that everybody talks about, you know, new EMS pilot going out, being brave, you know, flying when he probably shouldn't have been. I was almost that statistic. So, mm -hmm. you know, 